I don't think there's a better way to remember a hunt than having a beautiful meal from that hunt. This is mule deer and I had a couple roasts, but what I had left over was actually a lot of trimmings. Now these trimmings, before grinding them, I actually will take and freeze them whole, uh, vac sealing them and keeping them that way. I find they store longer and better than that, that the texture holds. So I'm gonna grind them today. I've also got some sausage. I'm gonna remove the casings and grind that together. We're gonna make a nice meatloaf, a wild mule deer meatloaf with some spices and some beautiful veg. So let's get started. The first thing I have to do is finish grinding the sausage and the mule deer. I like regrinding the sausage so that both the sausage and the mule deer are the same size and texture. I'll get better results when I'm mixing them together and it'll carry the flavors better as well. Whenever you're preparing to grind, make sure to cube in about inch by an inch or just a little smaller. It'll make it easier for the grinder to grab it. The other thing you wanna make sure to do, make sure the meat is chilled. As you're grinding, especially if you're gonna use a mechanical grinder, it's going to create some heat. We don't wanna begin the cooking process and if the meat is slightly chilled, it will keep it from doing that. Now that the grind is done, make sure to completely disassemble your grinder. Take all the pieces apart, put it in boiling water with soap, and then once you're done scrubbing it and getting it visibly clean, it's time to bleach it. Make sure you use bleach to kill any bacteria. It's really important for food safety. This already smells incredible. You can see the beautiful colors. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a large sheet pan. What this will allow me to do is layer all the flavors so that when I do combine it, everything is combined evenly. So mule deer down, you can see I've got the pork. Now the pork is gonna render a good amount of fat so I don't need to add very much fat. I'm gonna start folding this together and I've got some really nice spices. I want to get the smokiness in of chipotles. Now, chipotles are just a smoked jalapeno, and you can use as much or as little as you want, but I want to get this in right now so it's evenly dispersed between all that beautiful ground. We have to build a really strong flavor base for this. So the meat is gonna be great, but we've gotta add something that's gonna bring some fragrance. So I've got some onion and garlic, got some wild mushrooms, we've got red pepper and also leek. All of this together is gonna to build an incredible base, but there's quite a bit of water in all of these. So what we have to do beforehand, we can't put these ingredients in raw. We have to saute them, getting rid of as much water as possible so that when we do put the meatloaf together, it'll bind really well and be nice and dense. This is a sweet Vidalia onion, which is going to really pair nicely. The sweetness is gonna bring everything together. So I'm just taking the root and the tip off. Then I'm gonna slice it in half. And rather than doing a fine dice, uh, this is short enough and small enough that I can make a long slice. So it's essentially a julienne of onion. So just make sure to take that root tip off so it will come apart. Then don't slice it this way. We're gonna slice it this way. And the reason for that is all of our slices will be approximately the same size. They'll cook the same way and they won't be too long when you're eating the meatloaf. Always be sure to preheat your pan. You can see this one's already smoking hot. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Now we are gonna get quite a bit of fat from that sausage, but the reason why I'm adding this is for levels of flavor. So I've got a tablespoon of butter and I've got some olive oil. And the first thing to go in will be the onions. The onions will saute for about 10 minutes. They'll be golden brown and they'll be sweet and they'll be fragrant. I know you're gonna love this recipe, the sweetness from those onions, and I can already smell those chipotles, like all of this together is incredible. Now, we were fortunate enough to find these mushrooms. If you can't find anything, obviously, if it's not in season, just use a, a portobello or use just a white button mushroom, but always make sure to clean up the stem. So I'm just literally just gonna take, trim off the heaviest part of that stem, and then I'll take and make a fine slice of this. I want to make sure everything is roughly uniform because when I saute it, I want it to be all the same doneness. And when I fold it into this, I want to make sure that the ingredients are all nice and tight. Look how beautiful that is. The next thing I have to do is prepare the pepper. Now, this is very simple. I'm not going to fuss with this. I don't even care about the seeds. This is a sweet pepper, so I'm literally just going to take and slice rings. I think these little rings will be beautiful inside. 
After this, I'll make a fine slice of the leeks and I'll crush garlic and get some garlic in there. As you add each one of the ingredients, make sure each one is fully developed in flavor and you've got rid of all of the liquid that's possible. So you can see now the onions look beautiful. I'm going to add these mushrooms, give them a stir, saute them, make sure I've developed flavor there and at each step just work to get the very best flavor out of each ingredient. While the vegetable base is finishing up, I'm going to add some breadcrumbs, which will help to soak up any of the excess fat from the sausage. So breadcrumbs in, and I've got a couple farm fresh eggs, and crack those, and put those in, and get it ready to assemble. When the vegetables are nearly finished, you can see the bottom of the pan is completely dry, which is really good. The next thing to do is to get some tomato paste in. So that tomato paste we want, that'll give some really good richness. And with the tomato paste in, now that residual heat in the pan will continue to cook it. So I've taken it off the heat now. Now stir all of this together, and then I cool it off with some tomato sauce. That'll bring the temperature down. It'll also reduce slightly, so about a cup of tomato. That's gonna give it rich tomato flavor, which will be a perfect pairing. Look at this, this is the perfect flavor base to add to this meatloaf. Now I'm tucking into the ground some beautiful uh, canned Roma tomatoes. I've made sure that they're really well drained. Again, I'm paying attention to how much liquid there is in this. Now have a look at this mixture. This is beautiful. You can see it's almost completely dry now. And I'm going to take half of it and reserve it for the top, and half will be mixed in. The most important thing is that I have to get this cooled off first. So I'm going to take it out of my hot pan and just put it in a side pan and let it completely cool. With the filling completely cooled, we're ready to assemble. This is the last step. I'm going to take about half of this, reserving half for the top, and I'm just going to arrange this in little piles around just before I begin to fold it all together. The last step is to fold everything together evenly, put it back in the pan, and then top it up with some of this incredible topping. With all of the grind and mix neatly pressed into each corner of the pan, I'm gonna top this up with the remaining mixture. You can see how beautiful that looks. Now I've got the stove piping hot. Of course, here at the cabin, we don't have an oven. So we're gonna use the fire red coals of a hot burning stove to finish this up. After about an hour in the fireplace, you can see that it's caramelized, it's nicely toasted. All those flavors are concentrated. Now, for those of you who have ketchup on top of your meatloaf, um, this mixture on top will have that exact same, uh, same kind of texture. It'll have that exactly that same kind of flavor. A Little bit of sweetness, and as far as the taste, well, it's smoky and you get the uh, the mule deer flavor and it is mm, it's a perfect bite of wild game you're gonna love this meatloaf recipe mm -hmm.